Hey guys, Miss Venable here bringing you a half-life activity and today we are going to um, model radioactive isotopes using pennies. So each penny in my sample box uh, represents one radioactive isotope and um, each group would be assigned a different uh, element but for you all, since you are remote, um, we're just going to do lead 210. So each penny in there would have a mass of 210 AMU. Now we also need to know the half-life of this radioactive isotope. So the half-life for lead 210 is 22 years. So you will re need to record that isotope hyphen notation for that isotope and the half-life in your data sheet. And next we're going to look at taking the data. So to take the data for this lab, um, I'm going to start at time equals zero when all of these pennies, all of these uh, lead 210 isotopes are radioactive. And I'm going to fast forward through time, okay, 22 years. Shake, shake. Okay, that was a time warp. It's been 22 years. And now I'm going to open up my pennies. I'm going to spread them out and I'm going to separate them. I'm going to separate the heads and the tails. And I will get back to you after I have done that. Alrighty, so I have sorted my pennies into heads and tails. And let's talk about what they represent. The tails represent the isotopes of lead 210 that have radioactively decayed, and they are no longer going to be lead 210. They have become something that is more stable. So these are done in terms of radioactive decay for this lab, and I'm going to set those tails aside. I don't need to count them. The ones that are still radioactive in the sample I originally have are the ones on heads. And I need to count those and record the number in my data table. So I counted these on heads and I need to record the number 56 because there are 56 of them. And each one, remember, represents lead 210. I have 56 of them. So those isotopes are still radioreactive. So far we've done one half-life cycle but we are going to keep going and do another half-life cycle. So all of these pennies are going to go back into my box, my little time warp box here. And I will shake them and flip them again and once again sort them out. So I will get back to you after I've collected that data. So now we're on our second half-life and I'm going to shake, shake my pennies once again. That's a time warp. So 22 years have gone by. And now I'm on my second half-life. So I'm going to sort these out and count the ones that are on heads and take out the ones on tails. Remember, half of these will radioactively decay. It's always half, about half. So half of these will radioactively decay into something more stable. So that's the tails. Okay. And I'm going to take those out and I'm going to count the heads. And I'll get right back to you with some more data. So we are uh, just ending our second half-life and I have removed all of the isotopes that decayed into something more stable. They've joined the tails pennies over here. And I kept the heads. Heads represent the pennies that did not radioactively decay and therefore they're still gonna be radioactive. So after my second half-life, I've got 31 pennies. Each penny represents lead 210, an isotope of lead 210. And these isotopes are still radioactive, so they're going to have to go into a third half-life. I'm going to speed this one up a little bit and go ahead and shake it and count it, and I will get back to you. All right, so I did my 22-year time warp uh, for another half-life, and now I have gone through the third half-life. I've counted my pennies. I've got 19 isotopes of lead 210 that are still radioactive and I removed the ones that have become um, stable in those 22 years. Okay, so next we'll have the fourth half-life. Alrighty, so we did another time warp, another 22 years, 
And now we have come to the end of our fourth half-life. And so I removed the ones that radioactively decayed into something more stable. And my remaining pennies here on heads um, are going to still be radioactive. And there are nine of those. So I'm going to do my next time warp 22 years. And we'll see how many are remaining for my fifth half-life. Alrighty, guys. Another 22-year time warp. And now we're at the end of our fifth half-life for our sample. And remember we started out with a hundred radioactive isotopes. Now we're down to just four. So there were four lead to 10 isotopes still radioactive at the end of the fifth half-life. So now we're gonna go into our sixth half-life. So another 22 year time warp and now we're at the end of our sixth half-life and I have just two radioactive isotopes remaining. Most of it has decayed. And I think we actually have enough data now to get a good idea of what the decay curve would look like for this isotope. Um, if you were to graph this, because you're always dividing the amount in about half, what you're going to see is um, that the mass of what's still radioactive on your graph is going to kind of curve down. So this has been the data for the Half-Life Penny Lab. Thanks for joining me. I'm Ms. Venable, and I'll see you in the next one.